Welcome to MSA Prep Middle School Science Edition. My name is Brian Taylor, and today we're going to go over some questions that can be found on Maryland's public release website, mdk12.org. Our first question is dealing with, our first and second question is dealing with Standard 5, Physics. Topic C, Electricity and Magnetism. Indicator 3, identify and describe magnetic fields and their relationship to electric current. Objective B, investigate the, and explain ways to change the strength of a simple electromagnet by varying the number of coils wrapped, the amount of electricity in the wire, the number of batteries used, and whether or not an iron core is used. Our first question, As a diagram, we must pay attention to our diagrams because they will help us with answering the question. An electromagnet is shown below. Here we have an electromagnet. The electromagnet has a power source, which is a battery. It has a positive and negative end. It has a wire attached to it. That wire is coiled around a steel nail. And that, together, when the wires are contacted with the battery, this nail then becomes an electromagnet. And now we have the question, which change would decrease the strength of the electromagnet? Our choices are using an iron nail, B, using an additional battery, C, using more wire coils around the nail, and D, using fewer wire coils around the nail. We also must pay attention to the word decrease because it is un underlined. Anytime you have an underlined word, it is probably a good clue to give you the answer to the question. In this case, the word is decrease. Decrease means to make less or to lessen or to lower. Our second question is a doorbell contains a simple electromagnet. Which change would most likely increase the strength of an electromagnet? Our first choice is longer wires. Choice B is fewer wire coils. Choice C is an aluminum core. Choice D, a large power source. To answer these questions, I'm going to do a quick demonstration. That demonstration deals with three separate experiments. Our first experiment is going to be dealing with the number of turns around an iron core. The first trial, we're going to do four turns. The second trial, we're going to do eight turns. And the third trial, we're going to use 16 turns. And of course, for each turn, with every science experiment, we always use three separate trials for each individual experiment. And then we average those numbers out, and we get a final number for our experiment for that particular item. So, what I have here is I have a nail, I have some wire, and I have some batteries, and I have some paper clips. First, tr first experiment deals with wire turns around the wire. And we're going to use the same, not use different turns. So the first one is for four turns. Three, four. Of course, we need our paper clips in the experiment. So I'm going to put our paper clips out. Now I'm going to attach our power source to see how many nail, so how many paper clips the nail is going to pick up which is now our created electromagnet. This is similar to the diagram. Our first trial. None. Our second trial with four turns. None. 
Our third trial before Coils. None. Let's try it with eight turns. Five, six, seven, eight. It's connected to our power supply. First trial, two, second trial, one, third trial, two. Now let's try 16 turns. You already have eight, so we need eight more. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Connect our power supply. First trial, two, second trial, that looks like we have one, two, three, four, five. And then our last trial. We have three. Okay, we're looking at our chart. We have our data has been filled out. For four turns, as you see, we have zero that were picked up, and our average was zero. For eight turns, we had two, one, two, for an average of 1.6. For our six turns, we had two, five, three, for an average of 3.3. .3. So the question is, what does the data tell us? As you see, as the turns went up, our average went up. So this tells us that the amount of turns does have an effect on the power of the electromagnet. Let's look at our next experiment. This time we're going to test the number of batteries. We're going to do one battery two batteries, and three batteries. So to make it a little different, we're going to increase our number of coils to something different that we haven't done. So I'm going to add four more coils. So 17, 18, 19, and make it an even 20. Now we're going to use different numbers of batteries. So we're basically, by adding more batteries or changing the number of batteries, we are now changing the amount of power that is being supplied to our electromagnet. So we want to do one battery. And of course, again, we're going to do the three trials. Trial number one. Little technical difficulties.
one battery, number of coils that he picks up. First time he picked up one, two, three, four, five, six. Picked up six for that with 20 coils and one battery. time for our second trial. One, two, three, four, five, six again. And our last trial. Time it picked up one, two, three, four, and five. That's one battery. Let's try two batteries. Same number of coils. We haven't changed our variable. Only variable we're changing is our battery. First trial, two batteries. Picks up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Trial number two, two batteries. Picks up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Trial, our third trial with two batteries. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, last, last test is three batteries with the 20 coils. Again, we're going to do three trials. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Our second trial. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And our third and final trial with three batteries. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Our 
So with that, we have an average for our data. And you will see, based on the data, we have an answer for our first trial with one battery and 20 turns. The first trial picked up six. The second trial picked up six. The third trial picked up five for an average of 5.6. Battery with two batteries, our first trial picked up nine. Second trial picked up 10. Third trial picked up eight for an average of nine. For three batteries, first trial picked up 10, second trial picked up 11, third trial picked up 10 for an average of 10.33. So what does this data tell us? It basically tells us, as you can see, as we increased our batteries, our number of our strength of our magnets or our number of our paper clips that were picked up by the magnet increased. So this means that increasing the power affects the number uh, or the strength of the electromagnet. Let's look at our next experiment. Our next experiment, we're gonna change the core. So instead of using just a nail, I'm gonna use a nail, a pen, and a pencil. We're going to decrease our, our coils down to another, another amount. Okay. Let's do, let's do 10 turns. So we already have two there, so that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay. With 10 turns, and we're going to not, only variable we're going to be changing this time, unlike the batteries, last one we changed the number of batteries. This time we're going to keep the same amount of batteries. We're also going to keep the same amount of turns, which is 10. But we're just going to change the core of the magnet. In this case, we're using the nail again. First trial. It picks up three. Second trial picks up three again. Third trial picks up four. Now we're going to change. We had ten coils. This time, we're going to change the coil, Ch keep the coils, but this time we're going to coil, wrap the coil around a pin. So 10 turns around the pin. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, again, same amount of turns, so we're keeping our variables the same. It's 10 turns around the iron nail. So we're going to do, we did 10 turns around the pin, and we're also only using one battery. And now let's see how many it picks up. First trial, none. Second trial, none. Third trial, none again. Our next core that we're going to use is an ordinary pencil. Again, same amount of turns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. 
Still using one battery. See how many this picks up. First trial, none. Second trial, none. Third trial, none. So based on our data, as you can see, we had our trials. Three of, for each, for the nail, it picked up three the first time. Second trial, it picked up three. The third trial, it picked up three for an average of 3.33. The pen, first trial, it picked up zero. Second trial, it picked up zero. Third trial, it picked up zero. And an average of zero or none. The pencil, first trial, picked up none. Or Second trial picked up none. Third trial picked up none for an average of zero. What does this tell us? Tell us. By looking at this, we change the core of the material with the nail, the pen, and the pencil. So obviously this tells us that it does make a difference what the core is. In this case, the core that made the electromagnet was a nail. So let's go back to our questions. The questions that we had, the first one was, an electromagnet is shown below. A picture of our electromagnet, which was the demonstration. And the question was, which change would decrease the strength of the electromagnet? A, using an iron nail. B, using an additional battery. C, using more wire coils around the nail or D, using fewer wire coils around the nail. Key word again was decrease. If we look at our data again, looking at our chart number two, we have our batteries. Notice what happened when we increased the number of batteries. So if we go back here, using additional batteries, we had a increase, therefore we can automatically eliminate choice B. If we look at our next chart or our first chart, which is chart one, turns around it, four, zero, eight, 1.6, and 16 went up to 3.3. .3. So our thing there was that as we increase the turns, so did our strength, the strength of our magnet. So in this case, using more wire coils around the nail increased instead of decreased, therefore we can eliminate choice C. That leaves us with choice A and choice D. We know using an iron nail will basically helps us to maintain an electromagnet, so we automatically can eliminate choice A, and we look at choice D using fuel wire coils around the nail as our answer, because if we go back to chart one, four turns, we picked up none. So it decreased based on the eight turns, so when we went from eight to four, it went from 1.6 to zero. So again, our answer here is D. Our last question, a doorbell contains a simple electromagnet. Which change would most likely increase the strength of an electromagnet? Here again, our choices, A, longer wires, B, fuel wire coils, C, an aluminum core, D, a larger power source. The key word here is likely to increase the strength of the electromagnet. Longer wires, we did not test that variable. Choice B, fuel wire coils, we go back to our chart for our wire coils. 
When we had four wire coils, we had zero. But as we went up again, we increased it to 1.6 and 3.3. So fewer wire coils obviously is incorrect. C, an aluminum core. We used an iron nail and we got data that showed that it worked. But when we used a pencil and a, and a pen, it did not increase. Our nail picked up a lot. Our pen picked up none and our pencil picked up none. So when we changed the core from an iron or steel nail, it decreased. Therefore, if we change our core to aluminum, it's not going to work. D choice D, a larger power source. If we go back to when we went with change with the powers of the batteries, we changed it from one battery to two batteries to three batteries. Those batteries, as you went up, increased the strength of the electromagnet. So if we go to our question, which change would most likely increase the strength of an electromagnet? Our best answer here is choice D. This concludes this portion of MSA prep for middle school science. I want to make sure that you understand that you need to get lots of rest, pay attention to your teachers, ask questions, do your best, make your parents proud, make your teachers proud, and of all else, make yourself proud and do well on the test. Good luck and thank you.